Well, good morning, folks. You should be hearing me. You guys can give me a five by five. That way I can begin. It won't be a long one today. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate that. So we made it through another week. Obviously, uh, we had a lot of things come out in the States to get the uh, temperatures up a little bit for the summer. I'll save that for another discussion. <laughs> but uh, I kind of like want to talk a little bit about how Forex is not really my interest at the moment. It doesn't mean I've put it away entirely. I know I haven't been talking about it much. And even my private group are nudging me a little bit more than usual. But if anything, this week has shown it's the importance of knowing how to navigate and having someone or the skill set yourself to navigate the asset classes. When I first started back in 1992, my interest was solely on commodities. And that was like the grain markets, like soybeans and crude oil, gold, things of that nature. And a little less than the first year, my interest shifted to bonds because I started seeing things that were a little bit more smoother in that market. And eventually tapping into uh, Larry Williams material and seeing what he did in 1987 with his Robbins account specifically you know, taking $10,000 to over $2 million that year, got a little bit hurt, dropped down to 700000 and then traded it back to $1.2 million by the end of the year. So I shifted from grains and agricultural markets and then moved into more of a financial instrument like the bonds and E-mini S&P. Well, not E-mini S&P, but the, the futures contract S&P. Well, the idea of looking for systematic setups that repeat a lot, they do occur more consistently in financial instruments. And what do I mean by that? Well, in the agricultural markets like soybeans and coffee, lean hogs, live hogs, feeder cattle, and when it used to be traded pork bellies, which doesn't trade anymore. And for those that are wondering what a pork belly is, if you eat bacon, that's where it comes from. Those markets are a little bit more, well, let's say it this way. They're heavily influenced by supply and demand factors because it's a real market. It's a commodity grocery item. And you can't really eat gold. And you can't really eat an S&P 500 contract or a share and that analogy really hit home with me when Larry Williams talked about how there's really no incentive, no real reason to own a share of IBM or particular, well, metal or futures. Now, his analogy was if you get stranded on an island somewhere, what would you rather have, a share of IBM stock or a bushel of wheat, a bushel of corn? you're going to eat. <laughs> so those markets, and that's why I always speak facetiously about how these traders that go on looking for supply and demand in, in their trading, unless you're talking about commodities, uh, the, the absence of supply and demand is the reality because commodities are a real thing. You know, you're, it, it's a grocery store for the entire world. And just because a stock is expected to make money in the next quarter or the next few years or whatever, doesn't mean it's actually going to do it. And especially in the culture that we have today where you can be canceled unless you are constantly virtue signaling that you're going to support this view or this agenda. You know, that to me is a real gamble. Whereas the supply and demand factors that make up 
the fundamentals of a futures market like soybeans, wheat, those things are heavily influenced by climate. Uh, the yields that the crops would obviously bring. And I know all this stuff probably doesn't mean much to you because if you're not a commodity trader or interested in those types of things, it's real easy to disconnect from the conversation. But when it comes to Forex, you're trading currencies. No, you're trading an illusion. See, money is a lie. It's been sold to us all that it's a valuable thing. It's a tool. We have to have it for exchange. You have a good. I have this currency. We're going to make an arrangement where I'm going to give you this currency for that good or that service. But like the dollar, there's really no value to it. There's no value to crypto. There's no value to any currency except for the faith and belief that it has value. And we are entering a time when that's going to probably be very disrupted. And because of that, and because of the uncertainty of that, I have elected to step away from it because I know over the next 24 months, why? Why the next 24 months? Because that's what you're thinking. Why are you saying 24 months? What's he, what's he wanting that? What's he pointing to 24 months specifically for? Well, we have midterm elections coming up this fall. And then we have our presidential election. All within around the 24 mark. So there's a lot of things. Now, I know some of you look at an American guy like me and oh, these Americans, they think everything revolves around them. <laughs> uh, no, it's not entirely that. It's we are as America, you know, we're the last domino to fall. Whether you like us or not, you know, whether you like the fact that we have guns and we love our guns. OK, that's irrelevant. The point is, is if we fall. You're all screwed. And that's the reality of it all. And as long as we're gung-ho about standing up to agendas, we'll say it that way, you know, we have a chance. But if fall, our currency, which is in my mind the weakest it's ever been, Will need to be replaced. And the question is, is if they're trying to do this global reset, if they're trying to do this overhaul on the financial system, which it's broken, let's be honest. There's no real fixing it. It's not a easy solution. I'm not smart enough to know what the solution is. So that way some of you are probably thinking, you know, what would you do? I don't know. I, I wouldn't want to have the the problem of fixing or coming up with a solution to all of this mess. I have a solution in mind, but it's above me and it is faith-based. And we're not going to talk about that today because I know a lot of you are not interested in that as well. But my transition away from commodities is a lot of the ways I'm viewing my movement away from Forex because I want to be where there's going to be cleaner moves, more transparency and price. And because there's a lot of money, real money, tied up in 401k pillings in the U.S., a lot of speculation in stocks in the U.S., I trust that. I trust that those movements are going to be more, well, like I mentioned, transparent. And what is it that I'm concerned about that keeps me from wanting to be a participant in it right now? And what would take me completely out of the game for Forex? Because right now I'm just taking a hiatus from it. I'm not trying to participate in it. I'm engaging it for analysis purposes. But I'm not actively placing live money in Forex right now. So I'm with real money in futures index trading. That's 
real money going behind that. If these are going to be subject to a global reset, and there's talks about each country having a digital currency, I think that's just going to be the final step before they all come together and say, you know what, it's just better if we just come to an agreement that we're going to just use one currency. That kills Forex. Now, as long as that doesn't happen, Forex will exist. There will be opportunities in Forex. But here is the concern I had. This is the thing that I'm paying a great deal of attention to and why I'm not willing to put my money at risk in it. Years ago, there was a depegging from the euro and Swiss franc. And when that happened, and you've heard me mention this before in passing, there is no safety net for you. There's no safety net for me. And stop losses will do nothing to protect you. Because it reprices hundreds and thousands of points instantly. No one in financial institutions, brokerage firms, hedge fund managers, they were all made insolvent, bankrupt, and they don't exist anymore. When that one event happened, and it was deep, it was instantaneous murder. I see that coming. I see that coming, not just for one currency. But potentially all of them. I don't want to be in something like that. I can't I can't sleep at night knowing that I could be in a move where I have no control or escape mechanism or means of mitigating risk or reducing it to a, a measurable risk that I'm willing to take on as a speculative position. Now, I don't have that fear or concern with the equities market. Now, is that to assume that I don't think that they can have a, a crash or a sudden drop? They can. Absolutely can. But I don't think that's as likely as the currencies. Think about it. You know, this whole space of crypto, when it became a thing, okay, Everyone was champion, and the diehards still do this. They like this is going to be the end of fiat currency. Mm. It's a segue to something new coming, but it ain't what you have right now. That's why I'm saying all those currencies that you guys are trading those coins. I don't think they're going to really exist in the same capacity that you see today, or where they were ten years ago, or whatever. And you've heard me mention in my animated discussion <laughs> um, a couple weeks ago when I was saying that, and I, and I honestly believe that Bitcoin will go to zero. I wasn't you know, pulling your chain or anything. I, I honestly believe it will. And here's the reasons why. I'm going to say this soberly so that way you understand my opinion on it. And you're welcome to agree with it. I've had people come at me aggressively in email saying, you know, you're wrong. I'm going to laugh at you, whatever. Laugh. I don't care. I don't have anything in the race. That means that my opinion is more objective than those that have money into it. So you need it to work. You need it to exist. I could care less. And I called moves in it up and down. But here's the logic as the reason why I believe it's going to go to zero. And I believe all the current coins are going to go to zero. It's going to have that mechanism that people have faith in but they have to have sacrifices the sacrificial lambs that have to come in and say okay we learned our lesson with this coin and that coin and this one and that one and something has to die off to evolve there has to be a catalyst to institute change and that has to come by pain it can't be done gradually. It can't be a slow transition to, hey, there's a better coin. Let's all leave the ones we have our money in and go into this one. It has to be shock and awe. 
that's what they're all being herded into. When I say all, all asset classes are being treated this way. Because if they really are going to pull this great reset off, there is no safe haven. Even equities, commodity prices are going to be the only thing that are going to be real. And they're going to probably be hyperinflated next year. So, ultimately, I think you need to prepare yourself for things just not being anything like normal. Trading's going to probably get real difficult for a period of time. And as long as you have that in your head, knowing that this is likely to happen, you won't lose your mind when it occurs. And you'll be patient and wait for things to unfold. Go through it. Because you're not going to stop it. I can't stop it. I have no solution or any alternative means of speculating. That's why I'm going to where I started. I'm back at my roots. See, you think I'm just a Forex guy. That's just what I'm known for. I spent the majority of my teaching in the last 12 years or so specifically dealing with Forex. But in 1992, I started as a commodity trader. And I've been teaching really since 1996. Before I should have, really. <laughs> but I've been doing it a lot longer than most people realize. And this market, index future, I know it like the back of my hand. I know what's likely to occur. I know when it's likely to occur. And that was some of the rules that I applied Forex because I knew if they're going to be that systematic with trading these financial instruments like bonds and S&P futures, excuse me, I had to wet the whistle, then I want to be in those markets versus trading wheat or soybeans or cattle and just using those types of market moves or not market moves, but using those specific markets in commodities for like mega trades, you know, trades that do these annual big blow up moves. So I don't think that um, I should be, and this is my opinion about my speculating. You're welcome to have your own opinion. I'm not trying to twist anybody's on steer everybody away from Forex. I'm just saying I get so many questions as to why I'm not talking about Forex. So, much anymore and why I'm specifically dealing with index futures is because number one it's my money you know I care about my money more than anybody else is going to care about it so if I'm going to care about and the risk that I'm assuming wouldn't it make sense that I'm going to speculate in the thing or instrument that I had the most faith at the time that's why I'm in index futures now if things develop in a way where Maybe these central bank digital currencies that all of these countries are talking about doing, that might bring a short period of excitement in Forex as a result of all those types of things. And then obviously I'll be back in there, you know, going ham <laughs> on Forex pairs. But until we get through this round of elections, because I could really go on a tinfoil hat <laughs> uh, exposition here and just go in like you would never understand why I had all these opinions on just one conversation. It would have to take, you know, discussions after discussion, because if I say the things I want to say, um, some of you will have a thousand questions or you'll come away from this one thinking. OK, he's he's not really tightly wrapped. And some of you probably think that now anyway, <laughs> it's OK. But I just believe that it's better for me in my personal finances. If I'm going to assume risk, I would prefer to be in something I trust and where I think the moves are predictable and less likely to have adverse, sudden collapses. And that's a black swan event. When I tweet or talk about that or I mention it in video, we're in black swan season, meaning that. Something is on the horizon, off in the distancing, where we can't really know what direction it's coming from, but I know it's going to be in currencies. 
How can it not be? Think about it. Whether you want to subscribe to this whole Illuminati globalist agenda, global reset, agenda 2030. These are all things to get you thinking that, okay, if this is real, if there is some legitimacy to all these things that's being talked about, is it conspiracy or is it really going on? Well, you know, I don't know where y'all been the last two years, but does it feel normal to you? Do things feel normal? Because if they feel you, maybe your definition of normal is off. Because in a couple of weeks, I've been here for 50 years. And there has never been a time like this before. Not in the history that I've studied. And I have history books now that you wouldn't be able to buy. They're rewriting all that stuff. And they're giving you what they want you to remember and know going forward. But if these things are going to occur, this is going to have a major impact on the financial markets, whether it be crypto, whether it be index futures or Forex. It's going to have an impact. So because of that, and because that if this thing is really unfolding, or let's say it doesn't really come to pass, doesn't it make sense that if they're going to do a global reset, that currencies are in that discussion? And if this global reset is to be believed, what's their agenda? What's the reason for them to want to do it? It comes down to control. Control the number. Control the money. Period. It's got to be a number of people that they can manage. And there's too many of us right now. And a lot of people look at what we do as a means of income. And they do. They, they run their own businesses through speculation. Some of them do better than others. Some of them do exceedingly well. So if there's going to be a global reset and the agenda is control. And how do they control people? Food. Which is why I told everybody a year and a half ago that food would be weaponized. And look around, folks. If it ain't happening in your area, give it some more time because it will. And the other thing is money. Control the peoples in all of the countries. Control the population. Still fear. What's the easiest way to instill fear? Making it impossible to feed your kids. Fill your hungry belly. Make your ends meet. Pay your bills. So if that's true, and this is what they're trying to do, and there's going to be a global reset, currencies, by default, is at the top of the list. And I know the crypto space believes in their heart that the coins that they have in their possession right now if you want to call it that, is the solution. That's the answer. That's the solution coin. If not, at least good old Bitcoin will be. And I don't believe it's going to be. Now, does it go straight down to zero in a complete, re you know, just free fall? Obviously, I would be foolish to say, no, that can't happen because it could happen. But I believe it's going to keep making lower lows and these short-term little rallies that get everybody thinking the bottom's in. And you'll see all these guys come out and they're chilly. Yeah, it's going up. It's going to the moon. They do that in all markets. So that way people will do what? Buy it. Put stops underneath the lows. Because right now there is no liquidity down there. One has their stop down there below the low that just recently was made. Nobody has their stop loss under there. Until they create a rally and more people buy or they go down to that low again, revisit it and fail to break the lower, then rally it. 
and it makes everybody think it's a one, two, three bottom or a double bottom or a failed swing. And then when they buy that, they put stop losses under there. That's all engineering liquidity. That's exactly what I explained at 20,000. And it happened. And you're going to keep seeing that. You might see a little bit larger intermediate term. Look at your daily chart on Bitcoin. There's a big old gap. I think it might go up into that a little bit. But I don't look at that and think, oh, it's going to 50 and 60,000 and then 100,000 Bitcoin. No, it's just to get you suckers in here to buy it and put stop losses that don't exist yet. And then they're going to run it down air deeper. Why would they want to do that? Because they're heavily short. They're heavily short. And to get out, they got to have what? Somebody willing to sell it to them lower than the, park, the market is right now. And you get that by having sell stops engineered. That's market making one on one, folks. And if you don't understand that, you sure as hell shouldn't be in the market with real money. So you can stop sending me emails. <laughs> okay. I've had so many emails pushed to me. Are you saying that Bitcoin this and Bitcoin that? I don't want to talk about Bitcoin, but I have so many students that are losing their minds right now. Understand, this is a reminder, I do not trade. I have never traded. I don't own any coins. I'm not secretly fading anything. I'm not trying to you know, create fear so that way everybody sells their coins and I buy them up. Like I've had some serious nutters send me emails thinking I've got an agenda behind all this stuff. I just don't want you to get hurt. When I, when I thought it was going to go up, folks, I told you, I'll tell you when it's going to go to 20,000. I told you. I told you when it was going to go to 30,000. It, it happened. I said it was going to go to 50, 52. 62 is about to I get it. I don't see it going higher than that. And it just fell short of 70. And where is it at now? I only talk when I know strongly that this is likely to occur. So I'm telling you, I think it's going to go to zero. Is it going to happen today? By the end of the year, I don't know that timing. But it's not exempt. See, you want to believe the fairy tale that you're going to get around the central banks. You're not. You're not. They own everything. They own everything. The conglomerates, the brands. You like Ford? They own that. Yep. They own that too. Oh, but Tesla. <laughs> Elon Musk, he's something different. No, he's part of it. <gasps> yeah. See, y'all think you got a choice. You don't have a choice. It's an illusion. These people have a part. They're all part of the same theater act. And that is un... Un... Favorable of a viewpoint to most people. They can't believe it. They can't, they can't see it because that would be diabolical. <laughs> and that's what we live in, a diabolical world. See, these people, and there's not many of them, very small group of people, but these people own everything. And they laugh when they say, oh, I, I would never buy that brand of car because I'm team Mopar. I have a student in my mentorship that's going to lose his mind when I said that. <laughs> I have a Mopar right now. I have a, I have a Jeep. So that's not a Mopar, Michael. You got to get yourself something better than that, like a Charger. Is on the order, and I'm waiting for it to come, just so you know. 50th birthday, baby. <clears throat> so, when you have these restaurants that you'd like to frequent, and I'm very particular about food, or soft drinks, when they're neither soft or good for you. I'm a Pepsi drinker. I'm a Coke drinker. I'm a specific bottle of water drinker. I like Fiji. Or Avion. That's what I drink. But I don't drink Pepsi and I don't drink Coke. But people have these 
team oriented mindsets that I'm only going to drink this. And if you think that way and you're listening to me talk about this stuff and you're probably thinking, what does it have to do with anything? It has everything to do with everything. See, you're manipulated all day long. All day long. You're controlled and manipulated and you're led right down the primrose lane. Where all of these conglomerates that are owned by the central banks steer your every move. They instill desires that you never really had until they market it to you. See, I, the reason why I like to be like Mike Tyson. He walked out in there and he had a towel draped over his head that he cut a hole in. No socks, just his shoes and his gloves. And that's it. He's there to beat the living daylights out of the guy in front of him. He's not out there with Bud Light, Miller, Chevy, Ram Tough. He, he wasn't that type of guy. And when I talk to you, I'm talking to you straight, right from the heart, where there's no incentive. There's no secret agenda. I don't have an upsell. And I'm just ahead of the curve. By years. And I've been pretty accurate so far. And what I'm seeing coming, I'm alarmed. And you should be alarmed too. Not panicking, not freaking out, losing your sleep and such. But you should be taking initiatives that lead to reducing risk. Because it's going to get parabolic. Not just in the States, but everywhere. Because if this thing is really going to unfold and they're going to try their damnedest to make sure it does. Currencies, whether it becomes effective globally that there's a reset or whether it's attempted to be done. Currencies will be untradeable. How long? I don't know. But because I don't know that. Is it fit for me to put millions of dollars behind speculating in that asset class? Not knowing what's likely to occur, but knowing that it's not going to be good. That's going to be adverse conditions. So some of you that are only trading Forex are thinking to yourself, you know, what the hell? You know, what am I supposed to do? Just be careful. Don't trade with large leverage. Look at it this way. Imagine whatever you're trading moves 500 pips in one tick. What would that do to your account? If it wipes you out, you're trading too big. Oh, but I can't get rich. This is not the time to get rich. How many times you got to be told? I'm about to start a new series on YouTube because we've closed the mentorship teachings. Okay. The things that are required to do, you already have it in your hot little hands now. You don't need anything new. You don't need anything amplified. It's just that simple. And all my mentorship students now have been really stimulated by how easy it was for me to go in and take some parts of what they learned and just put it into a simple little model. And that is the simplest that I can make it. Anything more is more complicated. So if you look at what I've done on mentorship, YouTube, and that seems complicated, buying private, oh, I'm sorry, pi buying pri pirated mentorship videos is not going to help you because I was talking about moves that were going to happen that day at that time. That's how I mentored. So when you buy those old videos from people that are shilling because they're scum and they're broke, those people are trying to give you something. It's like watching the news six years ago. It's the weather report six ago. How's that going to benefit you tomorrow? You gonna be, are you going to need an umbrella tomorrow? How are you going to know that if you're looking at the news six years ago? The weather report six years ago on a Wednesday in June. Do you get my point? So that's why I'm here doing it now for free. So that way you have it fresh, piping hot, right out of my oven. It's relevant right now. And I'm starving these cons, these scammers.
and I'm loving it. And my students understand now that what they've been given is a means to an end. That end is what? Making your ends meet. What's that mean? Making your bills. Because folks, let's just be honest. Not everybody's going to get rich trading. But if you lower somebody's dog over here, <laughs> the expectations you have and you think to yourself, okay, I have a mortgage payment. I have a car payment or I have insurance and my cell phone bill. Groceries are outrageous now. You know, when I go to the grocery store, it's not unheard of for me to be spending twelve to fifteen hundred dollars to get the things that I put in my house a month. And I tell my wife all the time, like, I don't know how people that are working with families are doing it right now. Like, I don't I don't know how they're doing it. And it's going to get more expensive. So your job's probably not lining up, you know, to give you a significant raise. So you have to consider what you can do to mitigate all of this inflation. And that's my goal in a new series on YouTube. It's probably going to run the rest of the year. So that way you know where we're going. And there'll be reviews, you know, Monday through Friday on the markets. I've either commented on, on Twitter or to actually traded. So just know that I will sprinkle Forex throughout the week in there. But I want you to pay attention to this discussion here. And I'll refer to it, obviously, on Monday, on Monday's review, or actually Sunday. I'll mention it, too, because I'll, I'll talk about it, uh, in retrospect to why I think Forex is a little bit cautious right now. Or you should be cautious of Forex right now as a result. If we see multiple currencies have like a euro Swissy depegging event, that would be the end of me trading Forex indefinitely like forever. I would never touch it again. So that way you understand, I get a lot of questions. You know, what would what would it take for me to not want to trade Forex ever again? Right now, I want to trade Forex, but right now I know that it's a rattlesnake right now. It's this it's shaking its tail, and you knew that sound. You probably never had a rattlesnake in front of you, but guess what? If you had your eyes closed and you were taking steps in an you know, unknown path, and you start hearing that you're you're not wanting to walk anymore <laughs> immediately you got a, a a picture of a rattlesnake coiled up right now in your mind everybody understands what that sound is well i'm looking at forex and it's making that sound to me so i don't want to walk into something knowing full well and i've publicly made this known now that I'm likely to be a victim of such a sudden repricing that stop losses will not help you. Period. So you have to, if you're a speculator, if you're an investor, you got to go to where an asset class that makes the most sense. And right now, it's stock index futures. That might not sit with you well. It might not be your cup of tea. It might make you think, well, this is not going to work out for me. So I'm going to move on. Move on and trust that I wish you the best. But I want you to trust what I'm saying because if you get hurt financially, it's probably going to be way worse than you ever could imagine. Imagine owing more money than you had in your account. Where are you going to get that money from? See, your gurus don't tell you that stuff. Your educators, your booksellers, course makers, YouTubers, they don't tell you. But that's what's coming. If the last bastion of free enterprise and wealth creation is speculation and there's a global reset, do you honestly think that these folks are going to let you operate exclusively outside of their control and make the kind of money that they're used to making. That's the whole plan. The division of classes. It's going to be only 
the rich and everyone else poor. So I'm riding this wave as long as I can in the markets that I trust. I, I started, I cut my teeth on index futures. Consistency, you know, consistency immediately was there for me where I had hit and miss wins and heavy losses and blown accounts when I was trading other commodities in the beginning because I had no but when I became more systematic about how I was trading, what I was looking for, what type of move I would look for, the framework, I could see the trade before it would be in the chart. That was in S&P and bond market trades. Whereas everything else was, I hope it just goes parabolically, like straight up, because that's what I was believing that all of the commodities would do. If they're going to go up, they got to go up, limit up. 20 days in a row. <laughs> That's how myopic my view of the markets was when I first started. I was a you know, 20-year-old man. Limited understanding about money and didn't make much of it. So it's not, it's not a surprise to see someone hold the opinions that I had because I only had, I had one book read and it was a rag. It was useless. It wasn't even worth the paper it was printed on. But because it gave me the hope that I could get out of the rat race with it, I went headlong into it. Then when I finally learned how to trade, years later, not months later, not a couple weeks later, not 120 days, not 90 days or one week boot camp, it took years. Because I have a lot of character flaws that I still wrestle with. And until I learned how to master myself, I could not master my trading. I had to get out of my way. And I didn't realize for a long time that I was the issue. I was the problem. I was the very thing keeping me from finding consistency. But I would argue and insist it was something else. It was the system I was using. It was broken. Let me go buy another book, another course. It had to be something other than me. And that's the trick. That's the fallacy that educators like to take advantage of because there's a constant flow of new suckers. Like P.T. Barnum said, there's one born every minute. So when I talk to you in this capacity, there is no PayPal link. There's no donations. I don't want to do premier videos anymore because people started giving me money. I don't want that. I don't want anything from you except for your story. I want you to tell me what you did with it and that you were protected the wrong things with it. And if you are able to do well, that you share your story with me, that how you helped somebody else. You know, maybe, you, maybe you lent somebody a helping hand by you know, paying their mortgage because they lost their job. You know, that, that type of stuff has a, an eternal reward. Plus, it feels amazing. They can't afford groceries. They're down and out. And you buy them a month's worth of it. That feels better than just winning in a trade. I'm telling you, folks, if you do these types of things, it's infectious. Like, it makes you feel good about being who you are. And people love you for that. They love you for that. And that's what we need more of that. Not, I want to stand out on social media and be looked up to as a hero. I don't want any of you looking at me like that. But I do want you to listen to me because the things I'm talking about, I believe they're going to help you and not harm you. I don't sell you millionaire dreams. I tell you that if you do what I say you're going to do, should do rather, you'll do well. And that is defined by the limitations you place on yourself. You can make it as much as you want, or if you just want to make your ends meet, that's what I think is the most reasonable thing to do. If you can find a way to make your largest expense each month through your speculation, to me, that's rich. Because your major expense, the one that cripples you if you don't have your total hours worked at your job or your second job or your wife 
or husband working with you as a second income, if that doesn't happen, you can't make that major expense each month. So your ends don't meet. But if you have that major expense each month covered in your speculation, man, imagine that. Forget Lamborghinis, okay? Forget Corvettes, forget living a jet set life, forget that. Start by making ends meet. I have a lot of students that aren't millionaires, but they don't work anymore. Do you think they're looking at Monday and groaning to their soul? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Saturday's already started, and it means I only have today and Sunday, and then I got to go back to Monday again. They look forward to Monday because they know that they're not chained to the desk. They're not chained to their boss's limitations of when and how they can do something at the prostituted rate of return in exchange for their services to that employer. I mean, maybe y'all like being prostitutes. Maybe that's what you want to stay doing. You want to be pimped out by your employer and tell you you got to work the corner Monday through Friday. And you'll get a vacation when they say you have a vacation. And you're not going to make any more money. But you better start doing more tricks. Because the workload's increased. And the staff has been reduced. So the Johns are all your responsibility. Maybe that analogy is a little too crude. But guess what? That's how I view working for other people. I don't have a pimp. And to me, if anybody... Just says, I'm going to just live my life living for my employer. You're cheating yourself. You're cheating your spouse, your significant other, your children. But how can you get to that level of wealth? Notice I said earlier, if you just have your major expense each month covered in your speculation, that's rich. You're a rich person. If you can do that, because 98% of those individuals that you see passing you by each day, they can't do that. They don't even have an understanding that this can be done. Remember the first time you talked to somebody about Forex? Huh? What's a Forex? <laughs> what do you mean you can make money by touching your screen and all of a sudden it just goes in your account? How, how can that happen? Where's it coming from? Whose money did you take? Is this legal? <laughs> yeah. So it's, to me, it's amazing when I sit down with someone for the first time and explain to them what I've been doing my entire life. And they're like, how's that possible? Well, first of all, you got to understand that school is the indoctrination centers that make you stupid. All of us start out stupid. There isn't anybody that comes into this world and grows up as a child and is not falling out of the dumb tree and hitting every stupid branch. All of us are scarred with it. But the smart individuals, the ones that are thinking outside the box, okay, they get a taste of that bullshit and they think, you know, it's something better it has to exist. Because I can't keep doing this. I got a wife. I have a husband. I have children. I have you know, my weekend warrior friends that I hang out with. But is this it? This is it? This is the American dream? I, I, I'm tied to a 30-year mortgage. I'm paying out my ass. And then the government tells me I better pay more rent and property taxes each year or the thing that I own away. And I got to go back to that same place that I can't stand to work around the same people because they're in the same situation I'm in. They're miserable. You're forced to be among other livestock. And you're wondering why the place stinks like shit. You got to change your setting. You got to do that. Your employer ain't going to be like, you know what? You've been doing such an exceptional job. You deserve a new lifestyle. Let me make that happen for you. Don't report to work anymore. Stay home. I'll checks for nothing because you deserve it. 
you did very, very well. You were outperforming your quota for the last six months. And instead of employee of the year, <laughs> you get a new lifestyle. Wouldn't that be great if it did that? Like that was, that's what you all worked for. That type of thing. That's the kind of pension plan that would really want to work. But obviously, that's fiction. It's never going to happen. But you're either going to eat crap and deal with that the rest of your life until you can't do it anymore. That means get old. Body breaks down. And live a miserable golden age of your life because you didn't do anything. It's amazing looking back. I'm about to turn 50. There's a lot of things I wish I would have done differently. And some of those things I've covered in my series on YouTube. If I could go back and tell myself younger, you know, what I know now, you know, those types of things. And, and they're still the heaviest hitters. But I wish I would have listened to my uncle when I was 16, when he was first talking to me about trading. I wish I would have looked at it sooner. Because there was some significant opportunities that I could have taken advantage of right when I was 18. But, you know, apart from the things I said in that series, there isn't any regrets. And I feel good about that, that I was willing to basically shun all of my friends, my family, my employers. <laughs> And I did it my way. When everybody else said, it ain't going to be possible, you can't do this, that's a pipe dream. You can't do trading, that's a gamble. No one can predict the markets. No one can time the market. Well, I should rename myself. I should go out there and change my name to no one or nobody. Because you all are part of this collective now we can see things before it happens we can see what the market's likely to do next and i make it public knowledge there's a lot of you folks that were on the fence before january started when i told you all last year that i was going to be teaching for free oh yeah i'll believe it when i see it hey, he's probably going to fall on his face and he'll just fade away into obscurity and nobody sees him again folks there's been a large number of people that have been watching this unfold week after week after week since August of 2016. Now you all have a taste of it. It didn't cost you anything. You just had to keep showing up. Have I convinced any of you that it's possible? Have I convinced that I have a skill set that I am willing to lay in your hands for nothing, for free? And I get my rocks off doing it. I can make millions of dollars every single month if I said, here's the price tag, and here's the wonderful thing. You can trust what I'm saying because I'm saying I don't want that fucking money. I don't need it. I am padded out for lifetimes. So wouldn't you feel more comfortable with someone that, number one, can do it, could be making money off of you, could be fleecing you, and a whole lot of other people leading the pack in education and mentorships and all that business, but still says, I love doing this for free. Doesn't that communicate consistency? Doesn't that communicate that the guy that's talking to you right now has no ulterior motive except for wanting to see you succeed? Because that's what I want. I want all of you to do well. I don't want any of you to, to look at things like I've discussed here that may be a little depressing. Maybe you didn't look at it like that. Man, I am being pimped by my employer. Maybe I am wasting my life. I don't want to be 50 years old and look back and say, I didn't do anything. I'm going to tell you something. The folks that are listening to this and don't do anything, when you turn 50 and you start thinking about the forks in the road, the choices you had laid before you and which one you took you do not want to be this guy did not ask for a dime he proved it for months and I didn't do anything with it 
how will your future self feel if you don't take the initiative now for free? You see, you are watching me do it and others do it. And you may be thinking, uh, I got time. I'll wait until something in my personal life you know, happens and then I'll, I'll be more focused to do it. No, you need to focus right now. I can. You going to answer the door? Opportunity right now is knocking. Are you going to answer the door? Because if you don't do it, if you don't start working towards it right now, I promise you, I promise you in the next six to 18 months, you're going to be so overwhelmed with uncertainty, anxiety, fear because of all the shit that's going to be going on in every you're not going to be able to study. And you're going to be so panicked. You're going to be so fearful of what's going to be happening to you. Where are you going to make your ends meet? Are you going to be evicted? Are you going to lose your home? Are you going to take your car because you can't pay the note on it? You have to. You have to find a way to make income. You have to. Whether your job holds you as essential or not, you must have a way to feed yourself and your dependents. And some of you just think you got all the time in the world. That world is gone. It's crunch time, folks. It's time to get off your ass Put aside all those things you're wasting time with and start working towards learning this skill set while you can. Get what you can. You have to get up, shake yourself, see the opportunity, and seize it. Take it by force. You cannot sit around and rest on your laurels. You sit around like a lazy ass, I you, you will be crying. 18 months or less. That's the timeline. That's when shit gets really hard. Even for me. Oh, ICT. You're privileged. Nothing's going to bother you. Wrong, man. Wrong. I have kids. Okay, I have, I have kids that don't still listen. Like some of you. Because they listen to friends, of families, member saying oh well you know you can do it this way and do it that way and i'm their father and i'm living this stuff they watched it and it's driving me nuts why don't you do what i do it's like they've been like a spell's been cast over on. like like i don't know i don't get it but it's not shocking to me when i see people that i don't have any relationship to a lot of you folks that are listening to me, when you don't want to do anything, I understand that because it's like, okay, what's this guy trying to sell me? What's he trying to get out of me? Nothing. I don't want anything from you. I just want to see in the last one third of my life or whatever you want to call it, if I even lived that long. I want to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I've left a mark on people that gave me their time, lent me their ear, that I placed something in their hands of value that they can't really put a price tag on. Because honestly, when I sold mentorship, it was $155 a month for 12 months. And then one time charter payment of $200. Now, some of the folks that were in my mentorship, that was a very hard thing for them to pay. Very difficult to pay. Some actually quit because they couldn't keep up with the payments.
But I'm going to be honest with you. If you look at what I just gave away for free, that's sitting out there on YouTube, the videos are not going to come down. That right there is an ATM machine that costs you nothing. And it repeats every single week. I got to start this truck up. It's getting hot. Give me a second. I'm going to start heading back to the house and we'll end this. The Lost my train of thought. <laughs> Hang on one second. You guys going to have to give me a lifeline here. Give me a text on uh, or tweet. Tweet to me. What was the last thing I said before I told you I was going to turn the air conditioner on? It's the interactive part of the discussion. <laughs> it was the last thing I had said that'll jog my memory ATMs yeah okay thank you if you looked at what I showed on that okay now listen I know there's a lot of you YouTubers out there that will never mention my name but you're using my stuff I get it okay you're in this audience right now too I'm taking money from you. I'm taking money from you. I'm taking subscribers from you. I'm taking future sales from you. And guess what? I don't feel bad about that. Because there's other ways for you to get subscribers. I'm only here in that space on YouTube and on Twitter to show everybody that I've always been who I've always claimed to be. And my students can do what I claim that they can do. Not all of them. I've been very honest and said that not all of them are successful. Wouldn't it be a little unrealistic for me to be coming out here? All of my students are passing FDMO challenges and my Forex funds challenges, and they're all millionaires. That is something that would raise so many eyebrows. That's a scam. And you see all these other folks out there that they're selling this idea that they're teaching people how to make money and they're doing something exceptionally well, but they don't have any profitable students. Where's the profitable students? I'm looking on the internet and I'm seeing people just with my mentorship that's been made for free. They're out there getting paid for free. They learned this skill set. They opened up whatever these funded account companies are. And I'm not repping anyone in particular. I just know those two because of the students report that's who they've used. I'm not saying to go in to any of them. But when they start getting money paid to them, that they would never earn in four years. That's a testimony, folks. That is a money. Don't believe me because I say I can do it. Don't believe me because I show you example after example and every single week it comes to pass. Don't believe me because of that. Believe me because you have done it yourself. You learned. It cost you nothing but the effort to put into it. That ATM machine that I have on my YouTube channel right now, that is the most clear, concise, right to the point, no bones, even though I do some jawboning in those videos. There is no advantage to going and buying pirated copies of my mentorship because it will not give you what I gave you on YouTube for free. And I swear to God, that's the honest truth. Some of you think that there's going to be some easy spelled out method. I made it hard even for mentorship because I knew I had clowns in there taking my stuff immediately parroting what I'm saying or just outright selling the video. And there's a guy down in Texas waiting for his porn to be finished that's been selling my videos. <laughs> yeah, I know about it, buddy. I know all about it. Like that plot twist? <laughs> it's all right. Everybody needs to eat. But it's my stuff. If I wanted to come out here and teach everything I gave on mentorship, guess whose prerogative that is? It's mine. But I honor my relationship with those individuals. And I also taught them 
in retrospect, everything I said to do with the things I taught, they were supposed to do what I did publicly. That's just one model. I could literally sit down every single week for the rest of my life and make a new model based on the things that I know and what I teach. So you all think this is a one trick pony. This is the only way it can be done. No, it's not. But I sat down and I wanted to find a way that my daughter, who is not interested, she's, I, I didn't win her over. I don't think she can do it. I mean, I mean, I love her to death, but I don't think she has the capability to do it. And, and guess what, folks? That's okay. Because some of you are going to come to me and start as a student. You're going to try to be a student, but you're going to fail. You're going to fail. And it's unfortunate. But every endeavor I tried when I was younger, I wasn't successful in it. And I just kept grinding. I looked for something different. But I don't think you should completely stop trading, the pursuit of trading, because you can't make this one particular for you. I promise you, if you dig into my YouTube channel, I teach so many things. All you have to do is use what makes sense to you. Here's what you need to do going forward. Now we will close this discussion because I got to get home and get something to eat. My stomach is ground like crazy. And if I wasn't driving, you'd probably hear it. <laughs> but when you go forward in your pursuit of understanding what it is that you're trying to accomplish, your trading model, the, the thing that you're trying to figure out, number one is where are opportunities found? That means what makes your opportunity? What is the thing you're trying to participate in? What's the trade idea, the framework? Are you trying to trade a daily chart, an hourly chart? Are you trying to trade a five minute chart, a 15 minute setup? And that has to be linked directly to your personality. Because if you're somebody that's lazy and lethargic and it takes a whole lot of things to get you to motivate and, and move, Day trading is not your thing. I guarantee you that. And you're probably going to do very, very well just trading on a daily chart because it takes all day long for that candle to close. So it means it's going to take a whole lot before that time frame really changes the storyline that it's working in. So you need to figure out where you are personality wise. And there is a huge, huge mix of personalities in my mentorship group, whether it be YouTube or in my private group. There's a lot of you and y'all have different personalities. And those characteristics, you need to subscribe to a model that matches that, not try to change who you are. So many of my students try to be a mimicking version of me and it's impossible for them. So they just get frustrated and they live vicariously through me, but they're not successful in training. And some of you are thinking, man, he just nailed me right there. Yeah, but you're doing it wrong. I don't want ICT clones. I want to see the guy or gal out there that said, you know what? I'm thankful to put this stuff out here. And this is who it helped me shape as a trader. I've always been this trader. I just didn't have the skill sets to apply to my personality. You see what I just did there? I didn't take any credit for your success. Because guess what? Your success is your success. I not that I had a small little part in the beginning, but you did all the work. You did all the heavy lifting. The only thing I did was give you a roadmap. You still got to get your ass out of bed. You still got to be in front of those charts. You still got to be back testing and journaling. You have to do all of that stuff. So why the hell would I expect to get any of that credit? Mentors that are on YouTube and Instagram, they all want to be fluffed up because they're selling ego. They're selling lifestyle that they can't live unless those subscriptions keep coming in. Well, I just walked away from millions of dollars a year to prove that I don't need that money. Who are you going to believe? You're going to believe the guy that tells you before it happens and it happens. No safety net. Shows you when he takes a loss. Shows you a live account statement. Hello. I told you. No one's going to doubt in 2022. I gave you the same perspective I've given my private group. 
six years, day after day, week after week, you tasted it now. Now, some of you might not like the taste of it. <laughs> that's fine. But those of you that this resonated with, that's my target audience. It's not a specific age bracket. Whoever is wanting to listen to me, if I can change one person and improve their outlook on life and make their ends meet, guess what? That's been a success. And I can feel good about that. And I can champion their results. I can praise them, not them praise me. I don't want to be praised. I don't want to be worshipped. I want to high five those individuals that worked their ass off and said, you know what? My friends and family didn't understand why I was doing this. My boss laughed at me and said when I wasn't going to be here in a year or so, and now I'm not working there anymore. Not because they fired me, not because I lost my job or got you know, made redundant. Because I said, I don't need that income. It's a distraction, and it's deterring me from making more ends meet. That's a feeling that none of you can put a price tag on. I could have literally, seriously, I can think about it. If I would have made PDF case studies and included that with the mentorship that's on YouTube, I could have packaged that and literally sold that for $5,000. And I'm going to tell you something right now. A lot of you might say that's too much money, but I guarantee you I would have had about 250,000 people doing it. There's a lot of people out there that once they see it and they understand it, then this is consistent. This works. These things work and they're going exactly where he's pointing to. When that happens, something magical happens. Suddenly, when somebody says they don't have the money to spend on something, they can pull it out of their ass real quick. <laughs> yeah. Perfect example, my uncle, who used to talk to me when I was 16 about trading, asking to do this and do that. Is you know, My aunt, Barb, she'd be like, hey, you know, you know Stan, we got to do that. Oh, we ain't got the money for that. And then somebody's selling season tickets for the Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> on Craigslist at the price that all of a sudden, yeah, five times, five times what my aunt suggested they got to spend money on. You don't, you don't have the money for that. But Ravens tickets, oh, shit, we got all kinds of money, honey. Let me get out of the way. We got to get to the bank. We got to take out a loan. I'm going to put a line of credit. Out. See, because there's motivation. And the only thing I've done for the first six months of this year was what I promised I was going to do. I was going to teach you exactly how to go in and find these setups and prove to you that they're consistent and prove that you can make real money, not just demo dollars. You can make real money doing it. Not all of you are going to make money every single day. You're going to lose. And guess what? I've proven that losing doesn't really change anything. But if your mindset is not accurate or not accurate, but right, losing can derail you. And that's why I talk to you like this. That's why I give you these motivational speaks and sessions and kind of like an attaboy at a girl, that type of thing that, you know, prod you along because it's easy to be influenced by short-term adversities because your friends and your family and your work, say where you pimp your life out for a small amount of money, you spend more time there than you spend with me. So that negative cloud that's always over top of you, the people that are around you, that you hopefully look at them as a support structure, your friends and family, none of them are going to tell you what you want them to say. They're not going to say, you know what, Brian? You fucking deserve this. You deserve this. You've worked your ass off. You've done everything right. If there's anybody out there that deserves this, you do. And damn it, damn it, damn it take it. Nobody's going to do that for you. Your spouse ain't going to do it. Let me tell you something. I have never. I'm married to this woman now. <laughs> okay? I'm married to this woman, and she lives on the fat of everything I've done. And she still thinks it's a video game. She thinks it's a video game, no skills involved, and she's not impressed by any of it. And it pisses me off. Missy, you piss me off, woman. <laughs> I've worked my ass. For over 20 years to make this woman understand how much focus it takes to do this stuff. Nope. Not impressed. So let me remind you for the last time. Stop 
looking to be validated outside of yourself because they're never going to do it. You need to be your own cheerleader. You are the person that drags your ass out of bed and says it's time to go to work. Period. You do that. Well, guess what? You got to use that same moxie to get your ass out of whatever you're doing when you're not at work. And you have to study. You have to study. You got to pour into this everything. Do it for a year. It's one year, folks. One year. Why a year? Because you're going to see all the seasonal influences that take place over the full calendar year. That's experience. That's a perspective that you cannot appreciate until you see it. Then you have that going into the next year. And if you journaled, you compare and contrast. When you start a new month, okay, what did I experience last September? What did I experience last October? And what was it like the last three weeks of December? And what was it like in January? You're going to have something as a baseline, and you do that every single year. But I'm going to tell you something, folks. Once you have consistency, let me tell you something. What's never going to happen? You're never going to want to talk about what you're doing to some family anymore. You're not going to want to do that because you're going to know right away these people work. And there's nothing wrong with working, folks. But working folks don't like to see other people get out of that livestock pin. They don't want to be champion somebody else because that would be like taking energy and directing it to someone else to do well instead of directing it to themselves and for them to do well. So why are you surprised? They're indoctrinated. You're not going to wake them up. You're not going to stir them up by you telling them that you're going to work your ass off and you're going to learn how to do this and you're going to speculate way, way more income. Way more income potential than any other job that you would ever fall into or get degrees with. It ain't never going to be compared. It ain't, isn't going to be in the same vicinity, the neighborhood, the zip code. You're not going to get anywhere close to the fucking money that you could make doing this. And if that bothers you because I'm using this language, I don't give a shit. Because I'm tired of people tiptoeing and dancing around, boohooing that they don't have this figured out yet. What's stopping you? You have it now. It's done. It's on those videos. Study it. You got to work for it. It doesn't mean I watch the videos, therefore I should know. No, you watch the videos and I tell you what you should be looking for. Then you have to do the work. You have to do that. If you fail, I did not fail you. You failed you. Own it, man. Own it. I failed myself for the first few years until I realized I'm the problem. And then when I realized what those issues were that I was struggling with, perfection. I didn't want to lose ever. I felt that there was a way for me to trade and never have a losing trade. That's bullshit. There is a way to trade with a high degree of accuracy, but it requires you to trade very selective. I just taught you that. You used the economic calendar. High impact, medium impact news events, period. Times of day, days of the week, and seasonal influences. Yes, uh, some of you are thinking, oh, you said the word seasonal. Yes, I'm going to teach seasonal tendencies. It's a topical study. We'll do it. I don't know when, but we'll do it. But I told myself I wasn't going to get animated in this. But if you give me enough time, you'll see and see that I have swings. And sometimes I could be... Well, <laughs> not the best order, but nonetheless, I'm rooting for you folks. I believe you can do this. If I didn't believe it, I would not be wasting my fucking time. This is not monetized. I'm talking into a phone. I don't even know who, I don't know how many people are listening. I don't know how many people are going to listen to this. I'm not getting paid to do it. There's no ads here. This is the really real. This is the stuff. That I needed to know and hear and be reassured that guess what? Just because everybody else around didn't believe I was going to be able to do this, that I was going to fail. Listen, 
I'm a simple person that so many people around the world know my name because I persevered and I off and cried to the Lord and asked him, please, please open my eyes so I can see this. And if you do that, I will spend the rest of my life helping others with it. And that will be my ministry. Whether you want to be a churchy kind of guy or not, that's why I do this. I live my life like this because it's my promise. And I am telling you, I am continuously blessed. Whether you want to say I'm great or you love or appreciate what I do, it doesn't matter. It does not matter whether you do that to me or not, because I know what he does in my personal life. Without him, nothing I put my hands to will work. Nothing. My health would fail. My mental faculties would evaporate. Cars, homes, money, all that stuff can change. Like Job, it can happen to that. And guess what? I don't care if he takes all of it. Because my relationship with him is the most important. I've tasted wealth. I've tasted rich. I've tasted more money than I'd ever spent in my entire life. And I can tell you, if I didn't have Jesus Christ in my life, I would be miserable. And if that bothers you, unsubscribe. Because I'm going to tell you, the more times I talk like this, I'm going to talk about him. And if that, if that ruffles your feathers, I'm sorry. Oh, this guy talking like a sailor, he's going to bring Jesus up. Mm -hmm. I'm a sinner. I am a sinner. I'm not perfect, folks. But my heart is right. And what I'm trying to do, I'm looking out for all of you. And the only way I can, I have something that I've been blessed with. And I believe that if he didn't want me doing this, he would shut it down. He would not let other people find success in it. And guess what? They're doing it. And that inspires me. That gives me fuel to keep doing this. When you show appreciation, understand this. And I'm so tired of saying this. I see every comment. It only takes a second for me to scroll through. And I'm, you know, I'm not reading every single word, but I'm getting the gist of what you're saying, especially the long ones. I, I don't have time to sit and look through all of it. But usually people say, oh, man, you know, thank you. You're the goat. Stop calling me a goat. Stop calling me a king. Just say thanks. I appreciate what you've done. And you know what? It means so much to me. I am not this little pathetic little man child out there that needs to be called the goat. I don't need any of you to tell me what I'm giving you is gold. I know it. It's been in my hands for 30 years. And I love that he makes it possible that I can share this with all of you. I I'm such a privileged person to be able to do this and live my life doing it. I love it. I absolutely love it. I live, eat, sleep. Breathe this. I love it. It is absolutely, I, I am the embodiment of whatever a mentor would ever want to be and should be. I am living it. I'm not taking anything from you. I'm pouring myself into you. I'm pouring it. I'm not reserving it. I'm laying it in your hands. The only thing I want you to do is be able with it. And when I ask other people to credit me, guess what that's doing? And I'm going to say this, and I'm going to close it. I don't want you fluffing me up because when you all hear who the source is and it takes you right back to me, guess who gets the credit? Not me. Jesus Christ is the one that opened my eyes to all this stuff. With him, I was able to, I was able to figure this stuff out. And in time, I'll probably give you more testimony to how all these things happen. And you're probably not going to believe any of it, but I don't care. Okay. I don't care if you believe it, but some of you want to know, and I, I'll share it, but I don't care if you believe it because it doesn't change the facts. That is what it is. And you may be an atheist. You may be someone of another religion. I'm not religious. I don't have a religion. I'm not here to try to 
convert anybody because that doesn't work. Unless the spirit of God draws a man, that's it. So if I say, because I believe, and you're offended by that, well, that's a character fall on your part. Because you tune in to me because you want to know my perspective. What am I thinking? Why do I feel a certain way about something? Why do I look at something as an opportunity and what makes it not an opportunity? And how did I get to this understanding? Where did I come from? What did I go through? What did I have to endure? And what was my source of strength, encouragement? I've told you. And some of you aren't going to accept that. That's fine. Again, you're, you're, I'm not Pastor Joe, <laughs> okay? I'm not trying to be a preacher. I'm not trying to be the model Christian. I'm not trying to be anything. This is me. I wrestle with a lot of issues, folks. I'm real. I don't hide it. I don't lie to you about it. I don't try to sweep it under the rug. I want to be the real McCoy in every aspect of the word. And guess what? That means you're going to get the dirty laundry sometimes. Sorry. I'm human. I know a lot of you thought I was AI, a robot, <laughs> something synthetic, but I'm a real guy. I go through the same things. And when, when students you know, say things like, oh, well, you know, I don't believe that you do this and I don't believe that. And I've had people leave my teachings with some of the nastiest emails. And some of them have been trying to get back in right now. And they think I'm just being mean-spirited when I say no. No one can join that group. You all are getting this. This is free. It works. It works in every asset class, except for crypto, because I can't co-sign it. I've never traded crypto. But you know, there's a lot of my students that swear by it, and I'll, that's all I can say about it. But it works in Forex. It works in index futures and commodities. And there's something, a synthetic something. I know some of you already know what I'm talking about because I get questioned all the time. Does this work with synthetic something? If it's something synthetic in the name of the asset, I don't know anything about it. And I, I couldn't tell you if it works or not. So there you go. And the other thing I get asked a lot about is, can I teach it in the Indian markets? Because I, have, I guess I have a lot of people from India now following me. I don't, I don't know anything about the Indian markets. I don't have any experience with it. So... I have encouraged other people that have asked that same question to go and do it yourself and test it. You know, I know I don't have any experience with it. So don't, don't worship me. Don't lift me up. You know, I'm going to say things to be funny, facetious and, and, you know, <laughs> in jest, but none of it, will ever be welcoming or inviting, you know, the greatest of all time, king, you know, all that. I hate that stuff. I hate that. Because I'm not going to look at that and like that comment. So some of you that post that stuff to me, either in my comment section of my videos or my Twitter, I know some of you want me to just put a little heart on it. I've read your comments. I see it. And when I see it, I, it, I hate seeing it. I don't mean to be upsetting to you, but I'm never going to like your comment if you do that. So if you're looking for a response or a, a, like a handshake or a high five from me, you're never going to get that. If you call me a goat, if you call me the greatest of all time or a king, those are the three things I loathe. I hate that. I can't stand it. And I think it's pathetic that people want to be called that because that's a character flaw. And I wanted that as a young man. I wanted people to do that to me. When I was on America Online, I was cultivating that. I had a cult following on America Online. I just want to be Michael or ICT. I think that's enough. I think it's enough. Maybe it's not enough for some of you. But I enjoy doing this. I love it. I absolutely enjoy being who I am, what God's allowed me to be. And I think as, as I am humble, and some of you probably think I'm not humble. <laughs> but if you knew me when I was 20, folks, man, let me tell you, <laughs> I am the most humble person you've ever met compared to that younger ICT. But that person was extremely ugly. Shallow, self-centered, 
And I didn't care to teach like I care to teach now. I wanted to hold things back. I wanted people to ask and ask and beg and plead. And I got off on that because I was a young guy with new money. And young guys with new money think their shit don't stink. And I was the biggest prick you ever would have met. And people only cared to listen to me because they were hoping I was going to give them something new, something, some next market call. And when they fluffed me up, I looked at that as they, they love me. The only thing they were doing is handshaking with me, just keep motivated to keep doing what I was doing. Because if they were honest, I guarantee they all say, this guy's an asshole. And I was. I was. But I wouldn't admit it back then. And that's what wisdom gives you when you look back at your younger self and the stupid things you've done. I'm not proud of any of that stuff. But there's a lot of you young folks in here that are going to do that same thing if you're not careful. And when you're about to turn 50, you don't want to have as many regrets in that regard like I do. Because there's some of the things I wish I could have done differently. I made a name for myself, but for the wrong reasons. So in the latter part of my life now, these are the things that I try to work towards. These are my goals. These are my mile markers. I try to be a positive role model as best I can. I'm not perfect, but I know people are going to be people. And no one could have told me what I was doing back then was wrong because people tried. And I just sent them on their way, rudely. So I'm not sure what you got out of this one, but I got a lot of stuff off my chest. <laughs> so I feel good. Another Saturday confessional. We weren't in the Corvette today. I was in the Highlander. I know some of you want to hear the engine rev and all that, but I didn't want to take it out today because I just wanted to drive this new car. So, and I'm enjoying it. So until I talk to you next time, which will probably be on Sunday night, I think probably maybe around eight o'clock. No, that's not fair. That's not fair. I like to do things before the market opens up. So we'll try to aim for, let me see if I can give you a time window for the, the video. I will do my utmost to try to schedule and upload the market review for Friday's price action between noon my local time and 3 p.m. Sunday. So there's a three-hour window. Just give me within that window, your YouTube review video, video will be posted on the channel then. Uh, the rest of today, I'm going to be with friends and family, and I'll probably be quiet on Twitter. So if you've got anything out of this space on Twitter, you know, let, let me know in the replies to the tweet when I said I was going live. I should have it should have been visible to all of you. And yes, I recorded it. So it should be available to anyone that didn't sit through this during the live portion of it. And I think that's going to be it. So I enjoyed hanging out with you guys. And until I guess next Saturday when we likely will do it again, Lord willing. Be safe. <laughs>